What's up guys, this is The Honest Outlaw here, and today we're gonna to be doing another top five. We are gonna be doing a highly requested top five, especially since the last video. We're gonna be talking about the best guns under $400. A couple months ago, we did a video on the best guns that are $300, and you guys were so excited about that, you wanted the best guns that are $400 and $500 and so on. So here you go. These are my choices for the best guns under $400. The only real thing they have to do to qualify is be awesome and be under $400. They have to be reliable, accurate, good ergonomics overall, shoot well, be quick, be available, have good accessories, pretty much everything that a great gun is required, and they have to do all that for under $400. All these guns on the table were purchased for under $400, but the current political climate that we are in in 2021, prices may vary based on your location. So remember that. I'm currently in Iowa. Uh, prices are not going to be in the same as they would be in New York, California, etc. So that being said, let's get into it with number five here. One of my personal favorites, the Beretta APX Centurion. Now, there was such tight competition for this list that this amazing gun got in at number five here. It is a 9mm striker fired polymer frame pistol that comes in under $400, which is really nice, especially coming from a company like Beretta, who happens to be the oldest firearm manufacturer in the country and has one of the best warranties and customer service in the business. So unlike a lot of the budget guns on the previous list, this gun comes with all the awesomeness in it already. Quality control, customer service, brand name company, available accessories, all that good stuff you're going to get with the Beretta APX. It also has a chassis system in it, like the P320. So if you want to swap the lower out, put a different size lower, swap the slide out, put a different size slide, you can buy this gun and make lots of different guns with it for the same overall paperwork, which is really nice. Now this Saturion version is my personal favorite because it is a compact size gun and it's kind of a do-it-all gun. And for a lot of these guns on this list here, they have to do everything. Like if I'm gonna pick a handgun for the best uh, guns under $400, it has to be able to be concealed, it has to be able to be shot quickly at distance and be comfortable and also be able to defend your home and any other philosophy of use you might want a handgun and the Breda APX can definitely do that along with having magazines and holsters available. 3.7 inch barrel with an overall weight of 27 ounces makes it a good shooter but also very light and compact and good for carry which is pretty awesome. Comes with front serrations I guess you'd call it. One of the more controversial parts of the APX is the slide design. They do work extremely well but they are not as good looking as maybe some other brands and that's something you're gonna have to deal with the trigger on the gun is really nice as well comes with three dot sights comes with good texture back straps and two 15 round magazines along with an extended magazine release and full ambi controls this gun was also made for the u.s modular handgun contract and did go through a lot of those tests and those that that testing is available and trust me this thing is very reliable so for 400 dollars, i would consider this one of the best handguns on the market you could buy as I said, it's capable of shooting out to 50 yards, capable of shooting quick and close, and overall, just makes you feel all warm and fuzzy. In at number four, we have the XTAR EP9. Now, if you're familiar with my channel, you're probably familiar with the XTAR EP9, but if you're not, I'll go through it with you right now. The XTAR EP9 is a nine millimeter pistol caliber carbine that takes Glock magazines, which is pretty nice. Has a 6.5 overall inch barrel, giving that little bit more velocity and hitting power than a standard handgun, but still using relatively easy to uh, find and afford ammunition and magazines. Magazines, well, easier than 223 or something like that. The gun takes AR trigger groups and controls, along with having AR controls, making it very ergonomic. Has a side charging handle, comes with a quad rail, but I put an M lock rail on there. And it capable of accepting the braces, comes with a brace right out of the factory. It also has a B5 uh, more vertical grip and a Picatinny rail on top for mounting optics, accessories, and whatnot. So, the XR EP9 is one of the most reliable 9mm carbines we've had on the channel, and considering that it's completely made of polymer and under $400, that makes it actually a pretty incredible gun overall. Awesome that it's under $400, awesome that it has good ergonomics, but the really cool part about it, in my opinion, is it's 3.8 pounds. I mean, I kid you not, as configured, this thing is a little over four pounds, making it one of the lightest shoulder-fired weapons that you can get. But as far as the X-Star goes, there is a lot of value in this gun. Now, is there a little higher chance of a quality control issue maybe with this than there would be with like a CMMG Banshee or an MP5? Absolutely. But the reality is you can buy 10 of these for the price of one of those generally, well, an MP5 at least. So that's one thing you have to remember with, this, with the X-Star EP9 is you're getting a ton of value. If you're looking 
looking for a gun that can accept the same magazines and ammunition as your pistol, uh, pistol caliber carbines are a great way to go. Number one, you can shoot steel up close. Number two, they're easily suppressed and very quiet when they are. Uh, number three, they're great indoors, especially for noise particularly shooting indoors, you shoot a 5.56 with a six inch barrel indoors, it's gonna be unbelievably loud, blow the windows out of your house, never see your cat again loud. This won't be so bad, especially suppressed, you'll barely even notice it. Nine millimeter with wow, 147 grain or 165 grain is pretty close to movie quiet. So that's it's pretty nice with the x p 9 the other thing about it is, is that it doesn't penetrate through nine layers of drywall after it goes through the intended target. If you use hollow points in a nine millimeter carbine, uh, you're not gonna get as much over penetration as you might get with some other calibers. So overall, it's cheap, it's effective, it's lightweight, it's easy to use, easy to accessorize, under $400, and it doesn't look too bad either. In at number three, we have one of the greatest concealed carry guns ever made by man. This is the M&P Shield. This actually is the M&P Shield Plus with the extended magazines, but for under $400, you can't afford this. But you can afford the M&P Shield, the original single stack version of this gun. Uh, the gun is a polymer frame striker fired pistol with a pretty good trigger, I might add. 18 ounce overall weight and a three inch barrel, and it comes with one seven round mag and one eight round mag, uh, with still more than enough capacity to get any job done that you really need and it's small, it's light, but most of all, it's reliable. The M&P Shield is one of my favorite concealed carry guns even to this day because they're just dead bomb-proof reliable, they're durable, and they're pretty accurate and fast as well. They're a hair heavier than some of the other guns in their class with a little bit bigger grip, so they allow you to just rip those shots like a full-size gun while still maintaining that very, very light and slim overall profile that allows you to carry it all day. The M&P has a special place in my heart because it really kicked off the uh, single stack concealed carry market in my personal opinion. In the same way that the uh, Glock 19 kind of lit off the concealed carry market in the United States in the 80s and 90s, a couple of decades ago or a decade ago when this came out, it also kind of instituted all of the single stack subcompact nine millimeter pistols that you see predominantly today in concealed carry. So it's kind of a door breaker and for that reason I like it a lot, but it doesn't slack in performance by any means. It keeps up or exceeds with all of its other counterparts in its particular category. The reason why it's at number three and not at number one is because it just doesn't fill as many uses overall, in my personal opinion, as maybe a couple of guns that are a little bit higher on this list. That being said, you could absolutely defend your home with it, you could absolutely carry it all day, and it could certainly be your go-to pistol as long as you don't plan on winning any USPSA matches anytime soon with it. But other than that, it's a phenomenal gun, it's lightweight, it's easy to use, it's stupid reliable, and you can trust your life with it, and for that reason, it's at number three. In at number two here, we have one of the greatest, if not the greatest, shotgun ever made in the history of the world. Now, it might be a little big, but uh, it's certainly the best shotgun for the money, and it rivals another gun, which we we're just gonna mention at the same time. I found with this channel over the course of the last few years that you cannot mention the Mossberg 500 or 590 series without mentioning the 870, or people will come to your house with pitchforks and torches and picket signs. No, I'm just kidding. But for real, they're both amazing guns. However, I do prefer the Mossberg a little bit just because of modern day manufacturing. Remington used to be my favorite. I love Remington 870. It's the first shotgun I ever bought with my own money. I've had three different versions of the 870. I absolutely love it, but the reality is if you buy a new one today, you're not gonna get the same quality as you would a new Mossberg. So we're gonna go with Mossberg. Plus I have this Mossberg shockwave and I thought it looked cool on film, so here we are. But anyway, this is the Mossberg shockwave but it symbolizes a 500 or a 590, which has gone, been around for a very long time, many, many decades, and is tied with the 870 for being the highest sold shotgun of all time. Uh, really, there isn't much that separates the 870 to the Mossberg, in my personal opinion, other than the dual rails there, but mainly the reason why I like it the most is the safety. I like the tang mounted safety, it's just personally easier for me to use with either hand when I'm putting on or putting off the safety uh, when using the gun. A lot of people say, why even bother of safety so you don't shoot yourself but uh, I like the safety and I like all the accessories that being said uh, all the accessories are available in the 870 as well and the specs are almost exactly the same they're both pump action shotguns that can accept pretty much any ammunition that you could ever think of in your life anywhere from dragon's breath to non-lethal to beanbag rounds to buckshot to any weird shit that you can possibly think of I mean slugs bird shot eight shot seven shot six shot whatever you want double BB you can put it all in a Remington 870 or a Mossberg 500 and that allows you to hunt and or shoot a variety of things anywhere from competition, three gun, trap, uh, duck hunting, pheasant hunting, 
pigeon hunting? I'm not real sure, I've never pigeon hunted, but I'm sure that happens. Quail hunting, uh, deer hunting, uh, rabbit hunting. I mean, me personally, I've shot several deer, rabbits, and pheasants with Remington 70s and Mossberg, so trust me, they do work. And the nice thing about that is there's such a modular system. They don't just take a whole bunch of different types of ammo, they take a whole bunch of different types of barrel lengths and barrel types. So with the Mossberg 500 or the 870, you can get anywhere from, I, I assume, the lowest you can probably buy is 14, but you can probably get one lower than that. Anywhere from a 14 inch barrel all the way up to easily a 26 inch barrel. And you could either get a slug barrel, you get a rifle barrel, or a rifled slug barrel, sorry. Uh, you get a breaching barrel, you could get a long bird barrel, or you could get a short home defense barrel that is just smooth bore meant for buckshot. You can get different pumps, you can get different light mounts, you can get the cool little grip here, you can get the chainsaw grip if you're into that, you can put a sword on the end of it if you want to, you could use shotgun cards, you could use these cool Mesa tactical ones, you could uh, bevel out the loading port, and you can add optics as well. What I'm trying to say is if you want a gun that can do everything other than concealed carry, a shotgun's a pretty damn good way to go. On top of that, they're available in a bunch of different calibers, including 410, uh, 28 gauge, 20 gauge, 12 gauge, and so on. Anything you pretty much want it for an 870 or a Mossberg can do and if it can't do it right now you can buy some shit on eBay and put it on there and make it do it. So overall, it is probably the most modular system as far as uses that you can get. So of course, it has to be on the list of the best guns under $400. It doesn't hurt that they're extremely reliable, extremely available, and overall very accurate and rugged. So Mossberg 500 gets my pick, but if you like the 870, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna fight you about it. I like them too. I own several. All right. Now, before we get into the honorable mentions, I do want to mention my patron supporters. It's because of my patron supporters that you get to see all these videos and all their wondrous hillbilly glory. It helps us be completely non-biased. Helps us give you the information that you're looking for. And if you want to help us in return, all you got to do is go down to the link in the description and sign up. If you're not interested as a patron, no big deal. But there's also a link to a local shelter in Ames, Iowa, that I really like to support. They're a youth shelter. It's the YSS. I'd really like it if you go down there, click the link in the description and donate to those kids. If everybody that watched this video gave them a dollar, they'd have a whole lot less problems. All right, now we're gonna get into the honorable mentions. And since I'm cold, there's only gonna be one, and that will be the Ruger Predator Rifle. Uh, one of the best bolt action rifles that I've ever had in my life, and it came in at around $375 when I bought it. Uh, those rifles are available in many different calibers from 223 all the way up to, uh, well, at least 6.5 Creedmoor, because that's what mine was in. And uh, there's videos on YouTube of those rifles shooting a 1,000 yards, and uh, hopefully we'll bring you one of those videos as well at some point when I I get better at shooting. <laughs> but that being said, the Ruger Predator rifle is amazing, and uh, if you're interested, go out and get one. Now, we're gonna get into number one here. In at number one, we have the Canik TP9 Elite SC. Now, if you're familiar with the Canik series, they are direct copies of the Walter P99 series, which have a precox striker, which is actually pretty cool. This is a polymer frame striker-fired pistol with a three-inch overall barrel and a set of night sights and a pretty cool coating with an optics mount. On top of that, it has one of the best triggers in the business. It has a extended and serrated magazine release with full ambidextrous controls, front and rear slide serrations, great texture on the grip, and comes with a 10 and 12 round magazine, but higher and lower magazines are available. If you want a little more capacity, you can get that, and if you want those 10 round mags for those band states, you can get that as well, making this gun a viable carry option for most people in most states. It also has two back straps there, so you can adjust the size of grip, which is really nice for a gun this small. Now, this gun's a little bit bigger than the Shield and a little bit smaller than the uh, compact Beretta that I had on here. And even though that seems like kind of a compromise, it's really not. The gun is a little bit smaller than the Beretta, but in my opinion, shoots faster and more accurately due to that trigger and those better ergonomics and the better sighting system that you're gonna get. So for $400, the gun's absolutely packed with features. It's really reliable. We have a thousand round review of this if you wanna check it out. We also have many versus videos of this gun. So we have something like 1,500 rounds through this gun. Uh, and Overall, every gun we've compared it with, it has pretty much blown away. And for $400, it's hard for me to argue that this is the best gun on the market, or at least the best pistol. Can do home defense, no problem. It's got a light rail. You can put a weapon light on there. You can do concealed carry, no problem. It's very lightweight and thin, three inch barrel. It has a very light weight as well with an overall weight of only 24 ounces. If you're looking for a do it all pistol for under $400, in my opinion, this is really the only way to go, except for maybe the APX or the shield. But this definitely has more capacity than the shield and it's definitely more accurate than the APX. So in my personal opinion, with all the features included, with the reliability that you get, the accuracy that you get, I just don't believe there's anything better than this for under 400 bucks. 
If you have different picks, please leave your list in the comment section below. I love to check them out. A lot of times I'll find guns I've never heard of. I'm kind of a gun encyclopedia, but I still do not know every gun in the market. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. Please help out your local homeless shelters and remember to recycle. I'll check you later. The lube done sabotaged you? It's not the first time.